Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in this Python Curses tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get input from the user, so how to get keystrokes as well as the characters that they type. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is just how to get the keystrokes from the user, and then I will show you how to actually implement a text box and some more advanced things. So you can see here that we have stdscr.getch. Now, this is a method we've been using a ton, and all this does is wait for the user to type something in and then give us the value of what they typed in. So I'll also note here that I'm in the same example I was in all the other videos. I've just cleared everything other than the colors. So what I'm going to do is say key is equal to and then this line here. Now, this is again going to wait for the user to type something and then give us the ordinal value of what they typed. Now, the ordinal value is going to be the number that represents the character they typed. Now, if you don't want the ordinal value, instead you want to get the actual key name, then you can use get key. Now, this will give you like a if you type in a, it will give you like shift or like left underscore shift. If you hit that key, there's a bunch of kind of weird names for all of the, I guess, controls on your keyboard other than just the regular characters. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to allow the user to type something in and then I'm just going to show it on the screen. So I'm going to say, uh, let's go STD dot add string and then let's add an F string and let's say key colon and then we'll go with key like this inside of here and we can place this at like five five. That's fine. OK, then we'll refresh the screen. So let's say refresh and then we will wait for the user to type something in, except this time I don't care what they type in. So I'm just going to use get ch like that. Uh, and this will just mean we aren't going to immediately exit the program. We have to hit enter or some other key before we continue. OK, so let's run this and let's just see what happens. So I'm going to run Python tutorial four. OK, I'm going to type in H and then no, notice when I type in H, it shows key and then H. OK, so let's get out of this. Let's run it again. Let's try hitting escape. Notice it gives me this key. Apparently, that's the key that escape represents or that represents escape. OK, let's continue. Let's go to something like three. It's going to give me three. OK, let's try this again. Let's go with L. OK, it gives me L. You get the idea. It gives us the keystroke that the user typed in. Now, the thing is here, it's waiting for the user to type something. That's fine. We can wait for the user to type something. A lot of times we want to do that, but sometimes we just want to kind of be listening for the user to type in any key. And if they hit any key, we're going to respond to it. So now I'm going to change this example a little bit and I'm going to listen for the arrow keys. And if the user hits an arrow key, I want to kind of move something around the screen. So this will be a bit more of an advanced example, but I think this is fine to go through. So let's get rid of all of this right now and let's set up a while. Loop. I'm going to say while true. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the key that the user types. So I'm going to say STD SCR dot get. And then this is going to be key. And we're going to store this in key. Then what I want to do is I want to check if this key is one of the arrow keys. So I actually have to look at what the name of the arrow keys are. Let me look for those and I'll be right back. OK, so it looks like they're pretty straightforward. It's just going to be key like this underscore left. So this is an underscore, sorry, and then up, right and down. That's what the name is for the arrow keys. So what I'm going to do here is say if key is equal to this, then we'll do something. I'll say elif key is equal to and then this will be key underscore, right? Then we'll do something. So pass and then we'll say elif key is equal to K underscore up. Then we'll do something pass and then we'll say elif key is equal to key underscore down. Then we'll do something. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say my X comma Y is equal to zero, zero. And if I hit the key left, I'm going to say X minus equals one. If I hit the key right, I'm going to say X plus equals one. If I hit the key up, I'm going to say Y minus equals one. Remember, if we go up, we are subtracting from the Y. And then I'm going to say Y plus equals one if we hit down. Then I'm going to draw. Let's just go with like a zero or something on the screen and we'll move it around based on us pressing the arrow keys. So I'm going to say STD SCR and then I'm going to place this at Y comma X and I'm just going to place. Let's go with a zero like this and we don't need to color. It's fine. We can just have a zero. So the idea here 
is, oh, what am I doing? I need to say add string, sorry, is that we're going to draw the zero at the X and Y, and we will then change the X and Y based on what the arrow key is. And that will allow us to kind of move this around the screen. This is something you might do if you're trying to make a game. Then I need to, of course, clear the screen and update it. So let's first go with refresh. And then at the top of the while loop here, I will clear the screen. So STD screen dot clear. And in fact, I actually don't want to do it up here. I want to do it right before I add this, because remember, this is going to wait for us to type in a key. So if I were to clear it at the top, then we would actually never see this moving because what would happen is we would draw this, we would refresh, then we would immediately clear and then we would wait. This way, we're going to wait for the key, then we're going to clear the screen. So we'll see the key or we'll see the zero uh, while we're waiting for the keystroke, then we'll clear it and then we'll move it. OK, hopefully that is clear. Let us run this now and see if this works. OK, so let me try to move the arrow key. So I'm moving this over. So I'm going to the right. I'm going down. I can go left and up. Now, if I try to go too far up or left, we're going to get an error because we can't draw this on the screen, but we don't really need to worry about that for right now. The point is we can kind of move this around very nicely. There you go. We now have a way to actually use the arrow keys to change what is on the screen. OK, so let's get out of this. I actually didn't make a way to get out of it. So let me just crash. Uh, but that is the way that we can look for certain keystrokes. All right. So now that we've looked at that example, I want to quickly show you how we can make it. So this line right here is not going to hang our program. Now, what I mean by that is right now we need to type something for something to happen. If I don't type something, then we're just going to be waiting on this line because this line waits for the user to give some input. Now, a lot of times what I want to happen is I want to handle the user's key press as soon as they press it, but I don't want to be waiting for them to press something. I want to still be able to say move something around the screen or handle something else. I don't want to have to wait for them to press something. So I'm going to show you how we can handle that. Now, the way we do that is we actually say I pasted in the wrong command, but it's going to be std like this scr dot no delay true so when you set this to true you're saying i don't want this to delay which means that it's just going to not delay if you don't type something in what's actually going to happen is you're going to get an error but we can handle the error so let me show you what i mean here i've just set this no delay equal to true and now if i go here and i run this notice we get a problem or an error it says no input at this line so the issue is, since we're not waiting for the user to type something in, we're still trying to get what they typed in. And if they don't type something in, that gives us an exception. So what I need to do here is just say try. And then I'm going to say accept like this. And I'm just going to say key is equal to none. OK, so what this is going to do is try this line. If it results in an exception, so we didn't hit something, then we're just going to say key equals none. So that way this doesn't crash and we still have access to a key variable. So let me run this now and notice that I can now press the arrow keys and it works the exact same way as it did before, except I'm not waiting or delaying on the user to press something. Now, to prove that to you, we actually need to implement something else. Let me just crash this program here uh, because right now this doesn't look any different than what we had previously. So now that we've implemented this no delay, I'm going to start moving some text on the screen. So I'm going to say, let's go with what do we even want here? Uh, STD screen dot add string and let's just go with Hello world. Let me just make some variable here. Let's call this string x is equal to zero. And every iteration, I'm just going to increment this string x plus equals one. And what I'm going to do is say zero and then string x like that. And we'll actually, hmm, I'm trying to think how I can make this not move super fast. You know what? For now, this is fine. So what this is going to do is it's going to move this string. But I actually realize I need to do this right before I clear the screen. Otherwise, we're never going to see it. So we're going to increment the string X and we're just going to continually move the string while this while loop runs. So let's try this. And notice that it just zips right off of the screen. That's what I was trying to avoid. I don't really want to add a time delay here. Uh, so to fix this, I'm going to say plus equals one. And then I'm just going to divide this integer divide this by 50 just so that I have to increment this 50 times before this moves over one pixel or one character. OK, let's try this now and let's run this. And notice that hello world is moving, even though I didn't type something. And while I'm hitting the key, I'm still able to move this while this is moving on the screen. Now, if I get rid of the no delay, which I'll show you now. Oh, that's kind of cool that it moved to the next line. That was interesting. Uh, but if I get rid of the no delay, so let's just comment this out. You're going to see that this string doesn't move. 
So actually notice nothing's happening. And as soon as I hit a key, then hello world's actually able to start moving. Uh, let me see if I can get it to move once. I need to get this count up to 50. Okay, so you can see it moves once. But the problem is we're waiting for me to hit a key, so it's not moving. Whereas when I put the no delay true, then we're able to move even if I'm not pressing a key. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's crash the program. Now what I will show you is how to actually get user input. So how to allow the user to type in, say, you know, like a paragraph and then to get that paragraph and handle it. Okay, so let's clear everything that we have so far. Let's get rid of all of this. And let me now talk to you about something called text box. So it turns out I already imported the stuff that I needed. I was messing around with this before the tutorial. You can see we have from curses.textpad, import text box and rectangle. So you need to import both of these things. We're just going to use a rectangle to draw it on the screen and kind of make an outline for our text box. Anyways, now that we have that imported, the first thing I want to show you is how we draw a rectangle on the screen. So this is pretty easy, but I'm going to say rectangle like this. And then I'm going to put where I want to draw it. So I'm going to draw it on the screen and then I need to put the X, Y position. So I'm going to go two two. So this is the top left hand corner of the rectangle and then I need to put the bottom right hand corner of the rectangle. So I'm going to go with 10 and then 20 like that. Okay, so that should draw a rectangle. So now I could say STD screen dot refresh like that. Okay, so this hopefully should draw a rectangle. Let's see if this is going to work. So tutorial four uh, and it did draw a rectangle and it just very quickly crashed on us or stopped because we didn't have the line that we need, which is this. OK, so let me run this reminder. This gives you the ordinal value. The other one gives you the key value. So what I'm going to do here is run this and notice we get a beautiful rectangle on our screen. And if I hit enter, then we exit. So that's how you draw a rectangle. Now, one thing, because I realized I didn't really cover this in the last kind of section here, as I was saying, get ch gives you the ordinal get key is giving you the actual key value. Now the key value, um, it's kind of hard to check for the function keys or the shift key or the backspace key. If you want to find those, I actually have a list right here. Oh, it just went off my screen. Uh, let me see if I can find it. This is the documentation for curses. I'm going to try to find where this list was. It was literally just on my screen and then it messed up. Okay, so here we are. We have like key min, key break, key down, key right, key backspace. So I'll leave a link to this in the description and it shows you literally everything that I'm covering in this video, what all of the different kind of key names are uh, and how you access them. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Anyways, that will be linked in the description. For now, though, you can see that we drew a rectangle. Now, my rectangle is a bit big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm just going to only make it three rows high. So now let's run this and what happened there. Okay, we got our rectangle showing up. That is what I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a text box inside of this rectangle uh, by creating a new window. So I'm going to make a new window up here. I'm going to say win is equal to and then this will be curses dot new win. Now for my window, I actually forget exactly what I need. I think I need the width height and then top left hand corner position. Let me look at my little cheat sheet here to see what we need to do. Um, yes, it looks like we're going to go width height and then top corner position. So for the width, I want the width to be let's go with uh, 18. The reason I'm going to go with 18 is because this is two and 20. And so the width of my rectangle is going to be 18. So that's why I'm putting 18 here for the height. I'm going to go with three. And then for the top corner position, I'm going to go with two, two. So it starts exactly where this rectangle is. OK, so that's our window. Now I'm going to place a text box in this window. So that's why I'm making the window the exact size of what the text box is going to be. So now I will make my text box. Now to do that, I'm going to say box is equal to text box. And then I'm going to put this on my win. OK, and then if we go here, uh, you can see we're importing text box, right? OK, so let's just run this here and see what we're getting. OK, notice we're getting our box and actually really nothing has changed. Now, let me quickly explain what this text box actually does. So this text box is going to give you kind of a text editing area. Again, you're putting it inside of a window, so it's going to take up the size of the entire window and it's going to give you Emac like commands. So Emacs is a text editor. It's kind of like a console terminal text editor. Very, very old. Anyways, it has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts and you can use those same shortcuts inside of this text box. So, for example, if you want to get out of the text box, you have to use control G. OK, really weird. But this is the keyboard shortcut you have to use to say, OK, I'm done editing the text box. You do control G. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to say box dot edit. 
but I need to make sure I do that after I refresh the screen. So let's do it right here. And actually, let me see if that's even the correct place to do it. Uh, yes, that looks like that is fine. OK, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a window. I'm creating a text box that's going to be on that window. I'm then creating the rectangle that's going to kind of cover the uh, the text box. I'm then refreshing the screen. So all that's going to show up and then I'm going to edit the box. Now, when I say box dot edit, this will now take my cursor inside of the text box and let the user start editing the box. And then they have to hit control G to get out. of it. All right, so let's run this and see what the text box looks like and how it works. OK, so it's a little bit messed up. I actually think I know the problem, but if I start typing, you can see that I can type. And of course, I've messed up the dimensions here. But anyways, to get out of this, I'm going to hit control G. So it brings my cursor out of the text box and then I can hit enter and I get out. Now, let me fix this because I realized what I did here. So when I was picking the width of the text box, I accidentally put that where the height is. So I need to swap this. So this is three and 18. And now this should hopefully be better. We might also have to mess around with the window and where we're drawing the rectangle because I think the rectangle might have to be just outside of the text box so that we're actually able to show everything properly. Anyways, let's give this a shot here and let's see what this looks like. So Python tutorial four. OK, there we go. So I've now placed the rectangle slightly outside of the text box uh, just so that uh, what do you call it? we're actually able to see the entire text box because I guess what was happening is the window that's containing the text box was being drawn over top of the rectangle. Anyways, now I can say hello world. My name is Tim and this is a text box and I can't type any further than this because I've reached the end of the text box. Now to get out, I can hit control G. Now my cursor goes right underneath the text box. I can hit enter and then I'm done. Sweet. Now what I want to do is show you how we actually get the text from inside of this box. So the way we do that is we say text is equal to box dot and then this is going to be gather. Now gather just gathers the contents of the box. So now what we can do is add this text to the screen. So let's say uh, what is this even called anymore? OK, this dot add string. Let's add text and let's add it at like uh, who I don't know how far we want to go, maybe like 10 and we'll go like 40 just to make sure that we can see it. OK, so let's now run this and let's see what we get. OK, so let's say hello world. My name is Tim. OK, now control G and notice when I do that, it places my text over here. Now it's kind of messed it up a little bit. I don't know why it's kind of going off the screen. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, the reason why it's going off the screen. Sorry, guys, just realized here is because we have a new line after the name, right? So since E is on a new line, what happened here is I put the text and then we saw a new line character, which means that we're going to um, uh, automatically move this text story down to the next line. So that's why this is happening. Uh, it's intentionally being brought down to the next line because from the text box, it was on another line. OK, now let me show you how we can actually get rid of that because it's kind of annoying. Sometimes we just want the text all on one line. We don't want it to automatically go to the next line. OK, so what I can actually do to get rid of these new line characters here is when I use my gather, I can say dot and then replace. So let's go like this and I can replace the new line character, which is backslash n. it's an invisible character that tells us to go to the next line with nothing. OK. This just means now we're not going to have this in our string. I'm also going to say dot strip here. Now, what dot strip is going to do is remove any leading or trailing white spaces from our string. So let's just try this now and see if it works. OK, let's go. Hello, world. My name is Tim. OK, and now let us hit control G and then notice we get this all on one line. It removed all of the backslash s. OK, there you go. That is how you can get text. Now, of course, you can also get text by just reading in one character at a time by using the get ch or the get key um, functions or methods that I showed you. You just have to store all of those characters in a list or a string or whatever you want to use to store them. But this is a better way to use some type of text box. OK, so with that said, that's pretty much all I need to show you in this video. In the next video, I'm just going to go through a few kind of more advanced things that we can do, how we can say style the rectangle that we just drew and show you a few other cool methods that you might want to know. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.